as you work in After Effects, After Effects takes the results of various rendering operations that it's done and stores the frames in caches, both a RAM cache and a disk cache. It's often much faster for After Effects to fetch rendered frames from the RAM cache or disk cache than to re-render them. Let's see what this means. Here we have a green bar that says that all of these frames have already been cached into RAM for immediate playback, which means that I can move the current time indicator back and forth freely and get smooth playback with no delay. But if I try to do the same over here, it's very laggy because these frames have not been cached. And if I begin a RAM preview, the green bar starts to grow as After Effects renders each of these frames and stores the results in RAM. When the green bar is all the way full, then After Effects will begin the RAM preview and play the entire composition in real time. What is also happening is that some of these frames are being written to a disk cache. If After Effects determines that it's faster to read a frame from disk than it is to re-render it, then it will write it to the disk cache. Looks like our RAM preview is almost done loading. And there we go. Now we can see our composition playing back in real time because we have a full green bar, which means that all of the frames in the composition are loaded into RAM ready for playback. Now if I purge the memory so that the RAM is emptied by going to Edit, Purge, All Memory, then we see down here a blue bar left behind, and this represents the disk cache. So even though we purged the RAM, we didn't purge the disk. So all this information is on the disk, ready to be read back into RAM more quickly than the rendering process took. So I'll click RAM Preview again. And now, After Effects is reading the information from the disk back into RAM. And this is going considerably faster than when the frames had to be rendered fresh. This part here with the adjustment layer is especially computationally intensive because it has several effects on it. And there, rather quickly, After Effects was able to read all of the frames off the disk and into RAM instead of having to re-render them. Let's purge the memory again, and then this time purge the disk cache by going to Edit, Preferences, Media and Disk Cache, Empty Disk Cache. Now we have no green bars and no blue bars, with the exception of this tiny little speck of green that is right at the current time indicator because After Effects has re-rendered this frame in order to show us what's in the composition panel right now. If I want to render this for preview, but I don't want to sit and wait for my RAM preview to finish before I continue on with other work, I can, with the composition active, press Control enter on the main keyboard. And here in the info panel, it tells us that background rendering is occurring for this composition. Notice that what's being filled now is the blue bar. This is background rendering to the disk cache. So while this is happening, we can go to another composition and do some other work. For example, we could go over to our logo composition and do some work over here. And as we're working in this composition, we'll get updates here in the info panel about the progress of our background rendering. And here, I'm just checking the animation of our logo. And occasionally, looking up into the info panel and noticing that the background rendering of our other composition is coming along nicely. If I wanted to cancel the background rendering for some reason, I could go to Composition. Cache Work Area and Background is what adds the new one, but Cancel would stop the rendering that's happening in the background right now. Notice that the Cancel Caching Work Area and Background command actually stops all background processes. You can have more than one composition rendering the background at a time. You simply activate a composition, press Control Return, then go to another composition and press Control Return, and so on. Notice this refers to caching the work area in the background. If you have a work area defined in a composition, then what is cached is only the work area. Because the work area in the composition that I'm rendering spans the entire composition, then the entire composition will be rendered. We won't be canceling here, so I'll exit this menu. And as we can see here, 
the background rendering is almost done. And there, we're told that the background process is done caching the frames onto the disk cache. So if we go back over to this composition, we'll see that we have a full blue bar, meaning that we can go to any frame, and immediately After Effects will load that frame from the disk into RAM. And if we hit spacebar to play, then this plays back very quickly because instead of needing to re-render each frame, After Effects is fetching the frame from the disk into RAM. The disk cache is persistent across sessions as well. When you stop After Effects, the disk cache does not get emptied automatically. Instead, if you open the same project tomorrow or a week later or a month later, then After Effects will still be able to use the same disk cache. So you don't have to redo your work and wait for After Effects to re-render everything. I'll stop this preview. One important point about the disk cache is that what is being stored is not just the rendered frames, but the intermediate results for the frames. So, for example, if we make a change in our adjustment layer here to one of the effects, let's say we get rid of the sharpen effect by deleting it, right away we see that all of our cached information here is gone because we changed the input into the composition. The rendered frames are no longer valid. But if I undo, then immediately the cache comes back. If instead, let's say I change this to three, again, the cache is removed because right now the frames that are held in the cache are not valid for the current state. But if I take this back down to one, After Effects recognizes that we're in a state that it has seen before, and so it pulls those frames back out of the disk cache and into RAM. This storing of intermediate results in the cache, not just rendered frames, is referred to as the global performance cache. There's nothing that you need to do to take advantage of this, just know that it makes everything in After Effects so much faster. The best way to take advantage of the disk cache, including the global performance cache, is to put your disk cache on the fastest drive that you have and give it plenty of room to work. Let's go to Edit, Preferences, Media and Disk Cache, and see here where we can choose a folder and you can tell After Effects where to put the disk cache, and you can set a size. As the instructions say here, you should use a very fast hard drive or even an SSD. And make sure that it's separate from your footage because you don't want for the reading of the footage and the reading of the disk cache to collide with one another and cause performance decrease. And you should make sure that you're using as much space as possible for your disk cache. I'll click OK.